Welcome to This Week in Colorado Soccer, uh, another home edition. I'm here in uh, beautiful uh, Bruinfield, Colorado, and joining us is Buff, another Buff legend, Joss Orjo. Um, I believe she's at home in Tustin, Fountain Valley. Where are you at? Tustin, California. Tustin, California. Um, Joss, it's great for you to, I'm really excited for you to join us. Um, you know, obviously I know, and, and the true Buff supporters know kind of what you've been up to, but give us a little update of, of where you're at with uh, what's going on in the world of Joss. Well, I was in T or TJ with the Cholos. Uh, that's a team I currently play for. And then I have been with the national team a lot recently. Um, I had just recently got back from the Olympic qualifiers. And then as soon as I was going to play with my t club team again, I, well, this whole coronavirus thing happened. So now I'm at home. Um, let's talk a little bit about your team in, in, in Tijuana. Um, how did that come about? We know you were playing in France before that, but how did that come about? And, and what, what can you say about the league and what are your thoughts on the league? They started the Liga MX Femenil down there a couple of years ago, and it's, it seems to be pretty successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, in Mexico in general, I feel like soccer is a huge thing. So they have a bunch of fans, which is a huge difference uh, compared to in France, I feel like. Um, and not only that, but um, yeah, my agency kind of let me know that the league was opening up to Mexican-Americans. Um, and since I have dual citizenship, that means I wasn't allowed to um, play there. And so I was like, you know what, it's closer to home. I've been away since I left for college. So why not give it a try? And then since I was getting back into things with the national team, I thought it would be a little more helpful. So yeah, and ever since I started with the Mexican League, I really enjoyed it. And the support is great. Um, I've learned more about my culture, which is good. Um, and yeah, I've been with the national team more often. So it's been great so far. And I think the cool part of it, for those of you that don't know at home, they, they have, uh, I believe it's what, Mondays and Tuesday nights and Thursday nights. They have the games on like Univision and um, a bunch of other the kind of Mexican uh, TV stations that we all get with our cable and satellite packages. And uh, my father, Papa Sanchez, is a regular viewer. Um, so he'll always be, uh, he's figured out how to text now. So he'll text me, he's like, Joss is on, Joss is on TV. Um, but it's pretty cool. They do a really good job. It's the same announcers. I mean, they're, they're pulling yes. the passion for like at the World Cup final. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, uh -huh. You touched a little bit on your Mexican uh, national team uh, experiences. Um, obviously, you know, um, they had the world, the, excuse me, the Olympic qualifiers for uh, uh, Tokyo. And obviously, unfortunately, Mexico didn't qualify, but you had a great experience to play against uh, a team that's pretty good at uh, the, the U.S. team um, back, I believe it was back in February. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that match and kind of your thoughts and, and experiences you took from that match against the U.S. women's national team? Um, well, this is my first time playing against the U.S. national team with the full team. Um, so that was just a great experience. It was kind of crazy to think about because, like, Carly Lloyd, Tobin Heath, Megan Rapino, all the big names, was, I was playing against them. Um, but, I mean, we definitely have things to work on as a whole, but I think in overall, it was a good experience. And obviously, we're going to learn from that and just move forward. That's the best thing we can do. So, I mean, hopefully better prepared the next time we get to play against them. And what's your kind of your long term plan? How long are you going to keep this uh, soccer going and avoiding uh, real life? Um, it's been a good stretch for you. It's 23 years old, I believe now. Um, yep. You know, what would you have any what are your kind of your future goals, either with club or country? Um, um, I'm still speaking with my agent about that, deciding if I want to go back to Europe or if I want to stay in the Mexican league. Um, so that's kind of in the air still, but I don't know. I don't plan on playing that long, but then I've been saying that since I graduated college. So, and I'm still playing, so <laughs> who knows? Yeah. And then let's talk a little bit about the, the college days. Um, obviously you play for Randy Dodge and SoCal Blues and uh, we're pretty much one of our first recruits back in the day with, with Jason and, and Don Trenum um, came in in 2014, but we really recruited you back in 2012, our first year. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about your experience at CU, the ups and downs. Um, you know, maybe don't focus me on the downs. We won't talk about the YBMI, that that fateful afternoon in spring, which I'm taking credit for springboarding your professional national team career from that moment. Uh, talk a little bit about maybe a, a couple of your favorite moments while you were buff. Um, I mean, overall, it was a great experience. Um, here in California, my parents, were very strict so I think going away was kind of a great learning experience for me because it helped me mature 
it was, I mean, the snow was kind of a downer, but I mean, it's really pretty <laughs> um, being a California girl. Um, but yeah, I overall experience, I really enjoyed it. I wouldn't trade it for the world. So yeah. <laughs> We'll push you on the spot. Who was your all-time favorite teammate at Colorado? While I was there? Yeah. <laughs> well, my four years, I feel like Scout and I were very, very close. And we were roommates for four years. So, <laughs> yeah. There you go. That, that's longer than a lot of marriages. Um, and you guys didn't kill yeah. each other. So that, that's good. Um well, I think, Josh, you know, like I said, you know, we, we talked a little bit about it and we always talk about your potential as a player. And um, sometimes things click at different times. And uh, we're super proud of what you're doing. We brag about you all the time, kind of how, you know, you really had to fight through injuries and up and down and and had a great uh, senior season and all comp, all region and and have an opportunity to to kind of cut the cord, like you said, a little bit with your family and, and go to France and take that chance and kind of get back into the national team picture. Um, and now you're a, you know, you're a, a centerpiece of what they're doing as a center back. Maybe I should have played you there at CU as a left back, but, um, you know, and then obviously what you, what you're doing with your professional career now, this is, this is, these are the aspirations we want a lot of our players to have to play for their country, to be a professional for as long as you can, whether it's one more year or 10 more years, there's so many opportunities now for, for women's soccer players and, we're just really proud that you kind of took advantage of all the talent, God-given talent you're given, and now you're putting that work in with it. Um, we're super proud of you and, and everything that you're doing. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Well, make sure that you stay in touch. Make sure you tell everybody to watch this episode. Let's get the SoCal uh, um, viewership going. Um, but we want to thank Josh for joining us today. Um, on this special edition of uh, This Week in Colorado Soccer. Once again, look for more of these shows and, and more stuff that we'll be doing over social media until we can all get back to our normal lives. Um, but as always, you can follow us on Twitter and cubuffs.com backslash soccer. Go Buffs. Go Buffs. <laughs>